Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. Today we have with us A.J. Prasad with GMR Transcription. And um, A.J., we'd just like to get started with uh, introducing yourself and telling us about your background and um, how you got into business and uh, kind of what led you down the entrepreneurial path. Sure. Uh, so first thing, uh, first, you know, I'm glad to be here. You know, Mark just uh, uh, and then, uh, um, then I would, uh, you see, I have a, I'm one of those where I, I did, uh, um, start my career in the corporation. So I've worked for some really large corporations, startups, you know, all kind of businesses for like 17 years before I started my, my own business. Uh, and uh, because I came after the corporate world, uh, in the beginning, I just started being a, a consultant targeting the large corporations that that I knew, uh, but very quickly I realized that I didn't want it to be to sell my hours uh, as a consultant. So I decided to to build a company where uh, uh, you know so so that it becomes a, a real enterprise and it's not dependent on how many hours I I work eventually uh, for for me to to generate the revenue. Uh, so I. During my, um, you know, during the the initial phases of consulting, it was really clear to me. I mean, I just by chance uh, I was asked to help a small business owners owner, and I was just kind of intrigued. I had never, frankly, worked with small businesses <laughs> until that point, uh, and I was really intrigued that they had like no agenda other than please, you know, I need my business to get to the next level. Uh, and I just found it really refreshing coming from the corporate world. So I started, I decided to target the small businesses and entrepreneurs at that time. Um, you know, my background has been, I've been in marketing and strategy all my life in, in the major corporations. So of course it was naturally my forte. So I first started with, uh, um, I started a digital marketing agency, and this I'm telling you about a time 12 years back when most of the business owners did not even think that they needed a website, forget about Mm -hmm. any digital strategy. Uh, So, but I could see that there was a big need for that. You know, one of my job was the head of a dot-com company, so I was very familiar with the, you know, with the value that is, and, and you know, that internet is going to generate for businesses. So, so that's where first I, I started. Now, in the very beginning, through some of the referrals, I started to get a lot of people who wanted to, to start their own business, um, online business. Now, intellectually, I always knew that uh, it makes a lot of sense because you can start an online business with a much less uh, investment, uh, you know, but I had never done that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's much easier to look at, at some, someone who is what they are doing and, and help them, which I was, I was doing with the strategy and all. Uh, but someone who wants to start their own business, it was a whole different ballgame. Uh, so I was really intrigued by that, uh, and in order to to really first make sure that I know what I was doing, I decided to create my own online business. And mm. you know, I already had a team of the programmers and all that, which I was doing for digital agency. So in 2005, which was just a year after this, uh, I went on the entrepreneurial path. I spent $1,000 uh, literally to start GMR transcription. Uh, the, you know, the, the, I, I knew that there was a need for it because when I was doing the consulting work, I wanted to get some transcription done, and uh, it was a nightmare to find a transcriber, and the pricing was so, you know, wacky. You know, mm-hmm. they would be, they were quoting you by line and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I, I have seven hours. Can you give me an estimate how many lines? And, and so, so it, so I knew that for a marketing consultant, uh, there is a need for it. And I, I just needed to start a business, 
make sure that it is doing positive cash flow so so that i can uh, i learn from that and i could share with entrepreneurs uh, what i learned uh, now where i got a really pleasant surprise is i thought that the market was only for uh, you know for the transcription business the market was only for um, in marketing consultant because i was there and i knew that definitely consultants were needed when i launched this program i was just amazed to see the how many businesses and and uh, uh, your uh, students professors started using this service uh, so of course i had to tweak it uh, you know i had a team so i had you know when i first started i just slapped the business but then i had to to think through the whole thing and i did spend some time to build it build the whole infrastructure how how i am going to support it and uh, in 3 years that was a seven figures business you know managed by a team of three people uh, wow. and and today it is still doing the same thing uh, and i am uh, i'm basically spend half an hour on that business and most of the time is on my digital marketing agency where i spend so time. so let's um let's take a moment and and go just a a layer deeper on what you just said there sure. which is you started a business thinking one direction of the customers would be using it one way. You Correct. noticed that different customers were using it, and now all of a sudden you made not a true pivot, but you um, started div- uh, diversifying how your services were being provided and marketed. And then the other, a- so I would like to kind of have you comment on that. And then the other aspect okay. is scaling the business up because too many entrepreneurs don't. Um, logically and systematically have a plan to scale and they literally are just trading hours for dollars and they're the ones that's doing everything. So hearing that you have a thriving business and are, have a team that is um, conducting it and it's not dependent on you touching and doing every single thing in the business is, is pretty uh, um, amazing. So can you speak to those two points? Sure, sure. So so first thing let's talk about the demand so so I had uh, because I was uh, remember I owned a digital marketing agency and this was supposed to be an example right for my prospect yeah. and uh, and you know one of the things that I I always did on digital marketing agency is, is I just totally focused on marketing through the internet uh, at that time I I I still and, and by the way I am very proficient I managed you know at least uh, a uh, you know few hundred million dollars worth of marketing budget with tv radio uh, print and everything so it's not like i'm i'm not familiar with the other area but i love digital uh, marketing and i you know that's what i wanted to focus so i uh, when uh, when we did the marketing first for gmr transcription of course i was thinking it is going to be uh, all marketing consultants so you know i went uh, in, in those days still it was a, those days was a forum days <laughs> nowadays it's social media so yeah. at, at uh, you know 12 years back it was the social media was there but it was in the in form of forums and so i just marketed it on the the forums where we we thought that um, you know there will be uh, uh, all these uh, marketing consultants there uh, you know but also we were doing digital uh, marketing on search engine optimization for example to to make sure that the site is found so the moment uh, it started to come on page 1 for just most generic keyword like transcription services what we uh, what, what i could see that majority a vast majority i would say 90 plus percent of the people actually there are maybe 10 clients out of 10000 uh, frankly who are marketing consultant now so that tells you how i underestimated mm-hmm. so i could see that a lot of uh, the business i was coming was from the academic and the business areas so the first thing i did is uh, i tweaked the marketing uh, strategy to make sure that uh, that we are now we start to show up for 
uh, keywords that that has to do with academic transcription services, business transcription services, uh, and then then the others like insurance transcription services because the insurance uh, agents were contacting us, uh, and and so so that is how I evolved. So as we as I started to see the business, I targeted it so that uh, you know for example uh, we have. At least, I would say, 3,000 uh, clients from almost every major inv- university you can think of. You know, the Harvard, Stanford, tops to uh, state universities all over the country. Uh, and and the way we got that is we started to target, uh, uh, you know, academics so that we knew that what keywords they were using and when they uh, they were searching for transcription services they will find us. And then when they came to our landing page, they could see that we have been, uh, uh, you know, transcribing for all these major corporations. So it was, uh, I'm sorry, major universities. So it was easy for them mm-hmm. to decide. Same thing happened with business transcription, where once I saw that businesses are looking for transcription services, we started getting, you know, from the generic keyword, we targeted that segment again. And, uh, and then, you know, of course we have, you know, the, all the many, many, many major corporations, you know, Chevron, McDonald's, uh, you know, several of them, Discovery Channel. So these, as we started to get those uh, companies to sign up, then it got, you know, you just build credibility so that the next time another major corporation saw yeah. uh, that. Well, was, right there is a, a, a one point that we could probably spend about the next four hours discussing, which is this, social proof. If I come from a pay-per-click ad because I put in a a keyword that would trigger your ad and I click on transcription services Mm -hmm. and I come to your website, I've never heard of GMR transcription and but when you then um, go and I'm looking at your website right now, but then when I see the scrolling bar under there of join our rapidly expanding list of satisfied customers and I see McDonald's, Oxford University, yes. ADP, Dow Jones, FBI, yes. if they gave you their trust, why shouldn't I? So what I would say from an entrepreneurial standpoint is two massive lessons we've just learned, which is um, know your your numbers and know your metrics in the sense that where are your customers coming from? And if you don't have Google Analytics or some type of analytic program where you're seeing where people are coming to your website from a search and looking at the keywords, and then if you, you need to also notice the the divergence from your keywords you thought they were coming in from, which is what you yeah, did. Definitely. You started noticing, oh, people are coming to my website by putting this keyword in. Why don't we right. also, not that you're going to neglect the other keywords, but let's also focus on um, these because this is a wonderful observation. I would say that many business owners don't know any of that. But then the biggest thing I think is um, having a strategy in place to align yourself and to position yourself to new prospects and customers showing social proof. And not everyone can sell their widgets to McDonald's, AT&T, and the FBI, but no matter what, you if you sold to a customer, why can't you get them to promote you to their friends? And then now right. that small circle of, in, of influence grows. And then the moment you do get a larger, maybe not a corporation, because you might be selling something that not, is not B2B, but maybe it is something where it's a just regionally known, you just got to shine that spotlight on it. So can you um, speak to that concept of authority positioning and social proof? Correct. Uh, and, and yes, so so this this is what, you know, I, as part of the digital agency, we always do. So, you know, part of the, uh, you know, one of the, uh, your, the two mo- most important thing these days on, on digital marketing is definitely, first thing, you have to have a, a a good online reputation, right? So, so what what happens is, uh, so so suppose you have a B two C product, so it's it's not it's much easy to to say, hey, you know, McDonald's is my customer, and then other businesses can see that. But what if your customer is, you know, the average Joe 
who comes mm-hmm. through your store and uh, and and then then leaves now you know luckily there are there are several now uh, platforms the review platforms that you know that most of the people have heard of Yelp and uh, um, you know Google Plus and Facebook and all that so you can you you know we and we we create a whole program for our uh, customers to make sure that your happy customers are uh, you know uh, you know are going and and writing on the zero because that is the what you're talking about the social proof it's it's right there when you have a third party when your person going to a third party site and writing about you mm-hmm. it, that and as a matter of fact what we have seen that depending on the on the business like in the medical field uh we have seen uh, you know the the number improve from uh, literally from four patients coming through internet to like over 250 mm-hmm. and and the and the biggest thing of course we we brought the site up on keywords and everything but i think that the biggest difference it made is of course if you're going if to an urgent care center, you want to check the you know the your uh, the uh, the reviews, and when they came to us, their review was like 1.7. So who 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 would go to a medical facility that has such a poor review? Now yep. when they came to us, I basically asked them and say, hey, you know, if you if this is what the real reflection of your business, I don't think I can help you. And they yeah. are like, no, no, it, it, that's not true. It's just unhappy customers who are writing it. And in the and there was no latency. The last one was two years back. So we went on a program to to build the online reputation, uh, and it was very successful. So one thing that I tell entrepreneurs: make sure that you have built your online reputation because that's that's like a social proof right there. Mm-hmm. And then then also equally important is build your your social media community, uh, which is like once you have customers, have them come to uh, on on your join your Facebook, like it, interact it, and in order to do that, of course, people will not, you know, these days there are millions of uh, the sites that's there and the businesses that you deal with, so which means that you have to provide something. You know, for the for the people to so that they become part of your community and they become your support group. Uh, yeah, you're exactly right, and and I think that um, as in many areas of life, we have to have the word balance. So okay. where I'm going with that is, there's a lot of you. You started off our conversation by saying there's a lot of business owners that you noticed that didn't have a website, and I would say okay. I've seen statistics where. There's still, in 2016, there's still business owners that don't have a website. And I've seen some you know, um, conversations online where there are people that feel that social media is so powerful that all they want is a Facebook page for the business and their LinkedIn account and their Twitter account. And mm-hmm. I would say that that is a complete mistake because yeah. there have been many Facebook pages closed down by Facebook for some reason or the other what if twitter you know goes bankrupt what if linkedin changes something you have to use those social media platforms as a um uh, um extra external way to expand your your audience but your main communication needs to be your website and maybe your educational email follow up system you know maybe a newsletter things like that but can you speak to have you ever seen people that focus too much on only having a social media presence at the expense of not developing a one-on-one relationship with that client. Yeah, uh, Mike, we do run into them, but to be, uh, uh, you know, very upfront, now we don't accept those clients. Yeah. When when we we have someone, because, you see, I, it took me a long time to figure out who is my ideal customers, <laughs> because, you know, if, if you get anyone who walks in as your customer, uh, then you you are really inviting a lot of heartburn. <laughs> yep. And uh, so now we, but surprisingly, we do get people and we explain to them that uh, that this will not work for this reason. Actually, e- even on, on, so it is really hard to just do things. You know, you need to have a really uh, robust uh, brand presence online. So, yeah. 
the website, uh, right, you know, right from blogging, from review sites and, and everything. So you, it, there, there is, it's the days of doing one thing is gone. I mean, I, I always explain to people that when, when I worked for uh, the large corporation with a hundred million dollar marketing budget, we didn't put everything it, on TV. There was a TV advertising, there was a radio advertising, there was a print advertising, those yeah. coupons and everything. And there was a reason for that because y- y- we just wanted to have the, uh, you know, the brand presence everywhere. So no matter what medium people are using, I wanted our brand to show up there. Uh, and the, in the online world, it is the same thing. And here, what is interesting is even the small businesses can have a very strong uh, brand presence in the area that they are in because they don't need to be found everywhere in the world. Or, you know, but in their area, they, they can definitely do that. So, so, so this is, uh, you, see, and, you know, we, one of the things that we do just, just uh, when someone comes to us and is not sure that they need a complete uh, uh, online strategy and, and execution, then we just, we kind of excuse ourselves. And we just say that I don't think that we are the right company for you. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's important because, number one, you need to realize who your target audience is. And, number two, you need to realize what could transpire if you accepted a client that was not truly your in your, your wheelhouse because it could um, have you deviate your focus. You know, you might oh. do pay-per-click marketing and someone needs to have a mobile app built. And you might think, well, we could probably find somebody to maybe bring on board and do, and you're going to spin your wheel so much and spend so much time and effort and maybe even money to deliver that. And they might not be happy anyway, because it's not your highest and best use of your time. You know, I went through that. When, I will tell you that when I first started uh, this uh, digital I was really miserable. And I had already, I had a sort of, you can say, a thriving transcription business, right? You know, it was my own business. And, uh, and I'm like, should I shut this, close it, and then focus on building maybe more businesses like the transcription business? Uh, and then, then one day I was analyzing, because uh, end of the day, I do enjoy what I do. You know, this digital marketing is, is I'm, I, re- so, so that's why I, I was always kind of reluctant. Um, you know, I love dealing with four different businesses in the in a day and and switching from the problem this problem to that problem that that is one of my strength and i enjoy it uh, so i started thinking about what are we doing wrong because it seemed like every day i came in all i was doing was firefighting uh, mm-hmm. so i started i took a stock and in a, you know it dawned on me that it's just 10 percent of my clients where I'm wasting all my time, and the reason is that I am I'm very big on customer satisfaction for both transcription. And one of the reasons why transcription business did so well, I'm sure, is that I was so focused on customer satisfaction for every business. I, I was the same way when I was in corporate world, being a marketing person. So I was not, uh, it was not acceptable to me that I would have unhappy customers. So I would, so these, Seven eight percent of the customers is uh, I was spending all my time trying to make them happy, and then I said, "Wait a minute, what is what about this another twenty people who are so happy?" And and when I started to analyze, it just, it became like so apparent what kind of company I need I need who are going to be satisfied with my service and they you know they will thrive and I'll thrive, and which ones I don't so. We literally, I in in one week um, after that discussion, I had a call with all these clients, and they resigned, with the exception of one uh, person, because you know he just sort of begged and said, no, no, no I, I want to stay. But everyone else, I just resigned, and I didn't blame them or anything. I just said that I think we are the wrong company for you, mm-hmm. uh, and most of them agreed because they were not happy with us yeah. anyway. Uh, that's, that's and, smart. And then things just after that became so much better because I freed up all the time that I could focus on, on my own business. I've always uh, had a team right from the get go. Uh, you know, the moment as an entrepreneur, the moment I could uh, generate enough money, uh, you know, I, I always tell people that the best thing that I ever did was hire my own assistant because of course I worked mm-hmm. 
started working from home. Then I moved to an office because I couldn't meet with, you know, I got tired of meeting with uh, my prospective clients or clients at Starbucks. <laughs> so yep. I moved to a small office and, and I was there for literally two years. For two and a half years, I was totally on my own. And the best thing I did was hire an assistant. And all of a sudden, it freed up so much of my time. The business just went to the next level. So I always tell entrepreneurs, guys, just focus on things that you are good at. And you have to find a way to outsource, either hire or outsource the, the things that you're not good at and you're not going to enjoy it. Uh, anyway, and and that that is uh, again a, a topic for about a four hour uh, right. session. Uh-huh. But what a powerful um, step that is to help scale your business is to know what you're good at, to know what you're not good at, and mm-hmm. to hire the people or outsource it. Not even a full employee, but just an outsourcer um, to. Um, fill in those gaps. You know, if you are a C student in science and an A student in math, maybe you should, you know, focus a little bit on science to get it to a B minus, but really focus on math because you can take that A level and really take it to A plus and beyond because that's where your passion is. So in business, scaling up is noticing where you can take it to the next level, but where your gaps are and bringing someone in to fill in those gaps. So I want to thank you for your time today. I think we um, could could probably talk for hours and hours and hours. So I would like to close it with um, how can people learn more about your business and what's uh, the best website they can use to contact you? So, so you know, my digital marketing agency uh, website is gmrwebteam.com um, and the transcription is gmrtranscription.com and they can contact me either they can call me at uh, uh, my office number seven one four seven three one nine thousand. I I may not be available when someone calls, but I always uh, return phone calls. Or you can email me at aj s a j a y at teamgmr dot com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I really uh, appreciate your being on our show today. Thank you. It was uh, it was my pleasure. Good to- Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.